Hello Jackals! In one of my previous videos I showed you how to make a jigsaw puzzle like effect but I've used simple shapes. And then I got an email asking me if I can make a more realistic jigsaw puzzle like effect like the one you see now using SVGs. So that's what we'll do today and see how it goes. Now let's get digital. As you can see in this example something is really off and that's the positioning of the video or the puzzle pieces. And this was done with SVG files. Now when doing the puzzle effect with SVG files, I immediately knew that I will have at least one issue. Now when using the SVG files and if you want to have the puzzle pieces, you will want to have the puzzle pieces that fit nicely together, like maybe in this example, but you then also need the puzzle pieces to be individual. So I've used an SVG file similar to this one, imported it in DaVinci Resolve. If you want to import the SVG file, you will have to go to the Fusion page, go to Fusion, import and import an SVG file. When I've imported that SVG file, it only contained lines, which is not what I wanted. I need solid shapes. So the next best thing is I've actually made my own shapes. So in the Illustrator, before I went crazy, I actually said to myself, let's make it simple and just make it a corner piece. So the canvas size is 2560 by 1440, which is what my monitor resolution is. And then I've basically scaled these puzzle pieces into four pieces. So they fit nicely into the scene. And I've then exported these files as PNG images and SVG files. And I've used that in the scene. And as you can see, it looks messy. Not only that, look at how many nodes I actually needed to make this composition with four puzzle pieces. Now you can also use images. I'll just import one so you see what the issue is and look at this pixelation. So even though I've used Illustrator to make these files, this looks terrible and it will also show between the pieces. So I don't suggest you use images or the SVG files especially because you'll have issues scaling them. So in this case, the SVG file actually takes the whole space of the composition or the project that I want. So 2560 by 1440, which is not what I wanted. So I had to scale this down and position it and it just looks off. Not to mention that I had to make all of this mess and then the video actually doesn't fit nicely as it should. I then opted to use the shapes which you can find in Effects, Tools, and Shapes. So I made a quick test with just two puzzle pieces. As you can see, they also have pixelations. They don't have any soft edges. What's more, in this case, I needed six nodes just for this element and four nodes to make this one. And then I also had to combine them and position them, which is definitely not ideal especially if you want to have a lot more puzzle pieces. So the best way is to actually use polygons. I have one element here, the middle one, which is this one. So I'll start with a basic shape, make it something unique like this. Then this will be the bottom one. And then this will be the combination of the left one and the top one. You do need a similar composition to this for one single element because you'll have the video the background, which is set to zero alpha, the mask, which will be the puzzle piece. And lastly, the transform, if you want to animate it. If you put the transform before the merge as a mask, you will see that this is not exactly what you want. It just increases the mask. And now let's actually make it. So what you want is a polygon, a video, I'll just take this one. And the other positive side of using the polygons instead of SVGs or images is that if you make this into a template, you'll be able to do so without having to use external images and SVG files. So with the polygon selected, you will just make a shape. You can make a shape like this quickly, then zoom in make additional points. If you want to move individual handles, click on the point, 
press control and then click on the handle to move it. Now this is a bit tedious, I do admit that, but if you make this into a template, you'll only have to do it once. So this is one puzzle piece. If I connect this as a mask, it works like it should. Now in this case, I want to just connect it to the video because I need a merge and let me go back to default. So a merge, this will be in the foreground. I'll connect this as a mask and the background will be in the back. So if I display this on the left, it will look like this. That's why in the background we lower the alpha to zero, so it's transparent. When you have everything done, you can also make this into an effect macro, so that we can simply apply it to a clip in the edit page. Now lastly for the animation, as you can see, we can't use the size in the merge node. That is why you have to use the transfer after it so that you can make the animation as you want and you also have the access to pivot point so you can decide how this animation should behave. If you know what the animation should be, you can simply make it now. So in the transfer node, you would maybe start at size 3, keyframe it and make it pop in then go back to one. So this is the animation. And we can also go to merge to blend this in. So it will start with zero. And then when the animation is already happening, we'll make this into one. So it can look something like this. We can also come back and fix it. Now for the next puzzle piece, I'll simply copy this polygon, put it beneath, I'll go to the right side, I'll simply move these two points over, I'll leave this one as is, because it is in contact with the left puzzle piece, and I'll just move the points over and make a new shape. So this is my new polygon. I also need a merge, connect this as a mask, the media in will go in the foreground and the background will go in the back. And because I already have the animation in this transfer, I can simply copy it, paste it, and then merge these two together, display it on the left side. Now this is an issue, as you can see. So with this polygon, I have two keyframes and I just want one. So this is not the one that I want. I want this one. So I'll come to this point and unkeyframe it. And the best thing that you can do is when you make a polygon is that you simply uncheck the animation so that you don't have any issues. And I'll also uncheck this polygon so I don't have any issues when I make the bottom element. As for the animation, we'll have to come to keyframes and because this is the size, I'll animate the size and also I would have to go to the merge and copy this one because this one has an animation. As you can see, the bottom one doesn't. So I'll copy this one and with this merge, I would also move the keyframes over a little bit And now I have different kind of animation, but I would also have to move the position of the pivot point to the second element. And now let me quickly make this element and I'll show you how to make this one as well. So for the bottom element, I'll simply copy the first polygon again, move these two points down. So something like this. Now what you can also do when you start making the polygons is adjust the soft edge to maybe something 0 0.002. As you can see, it's a little bit jaggedy, but you can soften this up a little bit and do this with all of the polygons. So now simply copy these two nodes. So this is another puzzle piece done. And now to make this puzzle piece, 
I'll have to use this one to make this cutout and this one to make the top cutout. So I'll use a polygon. Now I'll simply copy these two polygons so that I can connect them like so and I'll see what I get. So this is now everything because this is selected to Muraju by default. So the first one, subtract, that is good. And in the second one, subtract, that is also good. And in this polygon, I can now make additional cutouts. So something like this, also adjust the soft edge and copy the merge and the transform and connect it as usual. As you can see, you also do need to use quite a few nodes when making the jigsaw puzzles manually with custom cutouts, but it's less nodes than using shapes. And just remember this was only done for two shapes and this was done with the SVG files. It's something similar to the polygons, but if you make the jigsaw puzzles something like this, what you should get when you open the SVG files or the group is something like this. Let me just ungroup it and we have, let's see, a polygon. It is, it's named just a layer. So you do get the polygons out, but you'll have to scale them in some way so that they fit nicely together. Now how you do this is up to you. You do have the size option and you can move them around. So this is one way how you could also do it. And you will definitely need a lot less nodes because you only have one. Because when you have a middle piece like this one, you don't have to combine the polygon with the top one and the left one just to make the cutouts. And then you will also need the transfer node like I have here in the end. So you don't need the scale in this case, but you will need to position the transfer, which will also serve as the animation. Now, if we take a look at this example with the polygons, it is exactly as the one I've showed you with the SVG. The difference being, we'll have to open up each individual SVG group to get the polygon out. So if you get the SVG files that have cutouts like this, this is awesome. This is exactly what you need. If not, you can use something like Illustrator to make your own. So using SVG files is ideal if you can extract the polygons, otherwise you'll have to make a little bit of a mess like this for each individual puzzle piece that needs to combine two puzzle pieces. But ideally you'll find the puzzle that has individual puzzle pieces like this and they all fit nicely together. So that will simply be able to position them just as you need and where you need them. And also you'll be able to scale them up and down. If you found the video helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and until next time jackals, keep it digital.